This video demonstrates how to model with workers who do their job at a workplace which is attached to a station. To do so, we'll create a production line with the source, four stations, and a drain. Then, we click the toolbar, Resources, and insert the objects, which the worker requires to do his job. First, we insert the workplaces. These are associated with the individual stations on which he works. Then, we insert a worker pool, from which he walks to the workplaces and where he stays when he's not working. Finally, we insert the broker, who assigns the services, which the stations request, and which the worker executes. Now we can switch off planning view. When we run the simulation, we'll notice that the worker does not work yet. This is because we have not told the stations to use services, and where to request those services. We open the station and click the tab Importer. We select Active to activate the use of services. We repeat this for Station 1, Station 2, and Station 3. When we click Reset and Start, we see that the worker works at the workplaces attached to the stations. To better follow the movement of the worker, we reduce the simulation speed. For our production line, one worker doing the job is not enough. Therefore, we need to increase the number of workers. Double-click the Worker Pool to open its dialog. On the tab, Attributes, switch off Inheritance of the Creation Table by clicking the green button next to the button Creation Table. Now click the button Creation Table to open the Worker Creation Table. Enter 2 into the column Amount to create two workers. Click OK to close the window of the table and click OK to close the dialog of the Worker Pool. Reset and start the simulation. Now two workers are created. Each of the two workers is doing every job, meaning that both workers are working at all of the stations. In the next step, we want to change the model so that only one worker works at Station and at Station 1, and the other worker only works at Station 2 and Station 3. To achieve this, we have to define services for the worker and services which are requested by the stations. Double-click the station to open its dialog. Select the tab Importer. Before we can change the services requested by the station, we have to switch off inheritance of the services by clicking the green button next to the button Services. Click Services to open the tab of the services. By default, the standard service is requested with the amount of 1. This means to process a part the service standard service with the amount of 1 is required. If this service is not available, the part cannot be processed. Enter job 1 instead of standard service. 
Repeat this for station 1. For station 2 and station 3, we define the service Job 2. Now we also need a worker who can do Job 1 and one who can do Job 2. Double click the worker pool to find its dialog. Click the button Creation Table to open the Worker Creation Table. Enter 1 into the column Amount and Job 1 into the column Additional Services. Press Return to insert a new row into the table. Drag the worker from the tab Resources into the toolbox and drop it on row 2, column 1. This defines the class object of the worker which will be used to create the worker during the simulation. Enter the amount of 1 and job 2 as additional service. Make sure you're using the same spelling of job 1 and job 2 in the service table of the importers and in the worker creation table. Otherwise, the simulation model will not run. Click OK to close the creation table and click OK to close the dialog window of the worker pool. Reset and start the simulation. Now one worker works at Station and Station 1, and the other worker serves Station 2 and Station 3. This finishes our video about modeling with workers. Cards. Driven by digitalization.